I'm speaking with Pat Conley, candidate for Office 84 on the Superior Court. All registered voters in Los Angeles County are eligible to vote for this office, so they're eager to hear from you. First, what criteria should Los Angeles County voters use to evaluate candidates for the Superior Court? Well, I think it's hard for the uh, voters to get the ballot criteria, but I think that what they need to look for and look at is the experience that somebody has going on to the bench, um, whether or not they've uh, had very much courtroom experience, whether or not they've done trials, whether or not they're going to be comfortable in a courtroom. I think that uh, beyond that, I think that they should look for uh, evaluations from not only that individual's peers, that being whether it be uh, people in their own office, I'm a deputy district attorney, other district attorneys, or defense attorneys, the people that we go against, or the many judges that we go in front of. I think they would give, uh, perhaps, be able to give the most information as to that. Okay. Do you believe that all citizens have adequate access to legal help and to the legal system? And if not, what changes would you suggest? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think we got the best system there is in the world. I think that's obvious. But I think that it can still be better. I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, people are a little bit overwhelmed and perhaps intimidated by the system. I think that uh, we could do more, perhaps, to allow people to feel, um, what's the word that I should choose here, comfortable in a courtroom setting. I think that uh, a lot has been done. I think that uh, with domestic violence crimes, uh, restraining orders, people are now allowed to come in without an attorney, fill those out and get a restraining order. I think that that kind of program needs to be expanded. I also would like to think that if the courts were run perhaps a little more efficiently, um, perhaps if we had more, then in those situations we'd be able to give more help to other individuals outside, be it uh, pro bono work or the opportunity for them to come in. Could you describe a situation in which you took a controversial position which might have offended or angered people and how you handled that situation? Sure. Um, I, I think that, that there's probably a few situations that I've had such as that in my career as a deputy district attorney. but. One of those situations that comes to mind is a case that I handled back in the 90s, which was a uh, hardcore gang case, uh, conspiracy to commit murder, uh, numerous counts. And in that case, uh, some individuals in our office were not able to get convictions in that case. And I was given the case and was responsible for it. And I pressed forward uh, against the uh, recommendation of our office. In doing so, I had judges side with me to keep that case going. And it basically was a retaliation gang case in which one of the intended victims was actually missed, being shot at by an AK. And that bullet traveled down a cul-de-sac, went through a wall, and hit a little girl, I believe her name was Sonia Woods, as she was at a kitchen table at dinner. Um, I pressed forward and, and was able to secure convictions after five trials in that case. And he was sentenced to multiple life sentences, but it did have an adverse effect on my career. What is your vision for the future of our judicial system and what changes might you suggest? Well, I think that uh, justice delayed is justice denied. And I think by saying that, I think that it, as much work as, as the system has gone about doing to, to improve its efficiency, um, I think that more can be done. I think that uh, not just uh, for moving the cases along, but I think that uh, so that the courtroom experience is not an imposition on people. We're not here to victimize victims again. We don't want to make them wait around. We don't want to victimize witnesses, and we don't want to victimize jurors. I think that uh, what I envision is, is having a court be a more efficient, uh, have a more efficient dynamic to it so that uh, people aren't waiting around, so that people want to come to court, people want to serve as jurors. Because the, the reality is that uh, Without the jury, without the witnesses, nothing's going to work. What characteristics make you a well-qualified candidate for the Superior Court? It's tough. Um, I would like to think that uh, one of those characteristics is I've been very successful. And uh, in being successful, I have been very, I believe, very respected as well as respectful. 
I think that if you inquired of uh, the judges that I've done trials in front of or appeared in front of and the defense attorneys that I've gone against, I think that you would be hard pressed to find anyone that would be a detractor. Um, in doing that, though, I've also handled some of the toughest cases in the county and been very successful. So I think that uh, I have that experience. And beyond that, though, I think that I have the courage and strength to take a stand. And I think that's what you need from a judge. You need somebody who is going to stand up there and do what the right thing is, regardless of what the consequences are going to be. And I think that uh, universally, regardless if you were a detractor or a proponent of mine, you would say that I would have the courage to do that.